Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Let's get started. All right, so this video is completely packed with tons of farmhouse decor inspiration. And I cannot wait to just for you to enjoy, get some inspiration and, uh, but let's get started. <laughs> All right, so for the first DIY here, I'm gonna take these three pieces of one by fours. I cut them to, so they're all the same size. I actually don't think I know what the size were, but if I were to guess, they look right around uh, maybe 16, 18 inches long. And then I took these one by twos and I cut them long enough where they cover all three planks, but not go over them. I'm gonna use wood glue and brat nails to um, put them all together and um, that way create a wooden sign. All right, so now I am going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. Now that the paint is fully dry, I am going to stencil the words, let's get cozy. I am using regular household latex paint. You know, those little sample sizes that you can get at the hardware store. And I am using a bristle stencil brush. I waited till it was fully dried. Now I'm going to distress the whole thing, giving it a very cute traditional farmhouse style. I'm even stenciling right over the letters. That way it just all kind of blends in. And once I was done with that, I dusted it and we'll be all done. This one turned out so cute. I love, love, love it. It's perfect for a winter decor. All right guys, so moving on to the next DIY, I'm gonna take this piece of scrap. Piece, I think it's a one by eight, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm gonna take two pieces of just paper from a book that I randomly have. I am going to Mod Podge them to the top of the board.
So I am never good at Mod Podging. <laughs> you can see all the bubbles and I have tried multiple ways and I just don't know how to get them off. In this case, I wasn't terribly upset because I was going to sand it anyways. So it kind of added a little bit more like an older look. But nonetheless, I need to figure this out, guys, because I don't know how to Mod Podge. How do I not know how to Mod Podge? <laughs> Anyways, I am using a 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just sanding it all over, smoothing it out and just giving it an aged look. I'm going to take another one of those stencils and I am going to stencil the letter, is it a letter? Like the and symbol? <laughs> and I'm using the same paint I used earlier. I lightly sprayed it with a top coat. That's just so that it is nice and sealed in and it's not going anywhere. And look how beautiful this looks. It will look great in a library or in an office. I just think it looks so cute. Alright guys, so for this next DIY, I am going to take two of that same 1x8 and these are just in a square now. I cut them so that they are nicely squared. I'm going to use a couple other pieces of wood and um, just pieces of things that I had in the garage. I was just putting things together. I want to make a nice lantern. I'm going to sand them just so that they are a little bit uh, smoother than what they were but not looking for extreme smoothness because I will be distressing it and I want that farmhouse look. All right, so now it's time to put things together. I am basically just going to use brad nails as well as wood glue to put everything together. And I'm sorry that the, the camera here, you, it's really high up, but you can see kind of what I'm doing. I just want to put four of these longer pieces in each corner. And then once I had the four corners put together, I am now going to place the top or the bottom. It doesn't matter which one it is at this point. <laughs> and I'm going to, again, attach it with wood glue and brad nails. Once I was done with that one, I am going to place a smaller square right on top of what will be the top of the lantern. And once again, I'm just going to use wood glue, brad nails to secure it in place. In a very last minute, I decided to add some trim. So this is just more of that one by two that I used earlier. And I'm just going to trim all the sides. That way, it just kind of looks a little bit more finished. Oh, would you follow me? Oh, would you let it be? If I 
I also decided to add an even smaller square on top of the one that I already had on there. I felt like it needed a little bit more height. And then I'm going to use a knob from an old dresser drawer and I'm just going to wood glue it in place. Now I'm going to give everything two coats of regular household latex paint. All right, so I am going to distress it using just a little bit of that black paint that I used earlier, and I'm just going to focus on the edges. I could distress it using the sander, but I really want this to really stand out, and the lighter wood on most of the lantern was just too light for it to come through, so I decided to do it with the black paint, and I really love the way it turned out. Alright guys, for this next DIY, I'm going to take these three thrifted jars that are beautiful and very vintage. I'm going to actually paint them. I'm going to paint them with white chalk paint, but I'm not going to seal them. That way, whenever I want to just wash off the paint, I can do so. So I am going to remove the hardware from them and then get started with painting them.
And then once the first coat was done, I did add a second coat. Look out, here she comes. I am going to use the wet distress technique and I'm just going to grab a wet towel and just distress basically where the letters are at as well as the corners and the edges of the top. I placed the hardware back on it and that's it for these guys. Once I was done with these, I moved on to the next one because I wanted to just kind of show you in the end what they both look like. This, I think, I thought it was a toolbox, but then I heard it was like some sort of chicken feeder. I'm not sure, but it was beautiful. I loved how sturdy it is. And so I wanted to give it a new life. So I'm going to wash it and give it a good scrub. But there was this black thing inside of it. It almost looked like very old, maybe oil-based paint. I'm not sure what it was, but I did not like it. So what I decided to do was to cover it up using some paneling. I measured the inside to make sure that I had the right measurements. And then I used my table saw to make the cuts. Once I had the bottom covered, I am now going to take Dollar Tree nautical rope and I am going to wrap the entire handle with it and secure it with hot glue. I had these decal letters from, I have no idea where I got them. I think it was at Packetans when they were open. And I am going to spell the word family. I am placing them on the box before I paint. That way I can then remove the letters and then I can see that stainless steel underneath. I've got to let her go. I know it won't be easy. I want to hold her close. But I have to try. Try as hard as I can. Cause she'll never be mine. I listen when she talks. I watch her when she walks. She's giving me these feelings that I never felt before. She will never know that I love her so well. She's with somebody else and I will have to let her go. She will never I used Rust-Oleum chalk pen in the linen white and once it was dry, I am now using the same wet distress technique using a wet rag and just distressing where it would naturally distress and giving it a little bit of a heavier distress and this box turned out absolutely stunning. I still have it. I use it every so often for my decor and it's just so, so beautiful. I don't know what else to do I wanna 
get away from every little thing just to try to make it through I've been thinking about my options every detail in my head but it doesn't really matter nothing matters so I cry instead staring at the ceiling I've been staying up all night Everything I ever worked for vanished in the blink of an eye I've been asking every question Cause I haven't got a clue Was it gotta be me? What the hell am I supposed to do? For this next DIY, I am going to use this little stool that I got off of Marketplace on Facebook. I decided to give it new life and actually new complete purpose. I am going to add some caster wheels on the bottom, but I realized that I cannot add them because the legs are kind of on the thinner side. So I'm going to use one by fours and I'm going to attach those to the legs going long ways. And that way I have enough area to then add casters. I'm going to give it two coats of regular household latex white paint. At first, I wanted to add a stencil on the top and just leave it all white, but then I decided to add um, just a padded seat because I will be spending a lot of time sitting on this little stool because it's going to be where I would sit to paint furniture and I can roll around the furniture and make it a lot easier for me. So I decided to add this fabric, which is from Packetans as well. The print is just absolutely beautiful and it just hides when I paint, you know. <laughs> so I'm going to staple one, uh, actually two sides and leave two open. That way I can stuff the pillow stuffing. And then as I go, then um, start stapling um, uh, the other two corners or the other two sides.
and I know the angle here is a little weird. I don't know what was happening with my camera, <laughs> but um, you can tell what I'm doing. I'm basically just stuffing and then tightening as I go, stapling as I go to make sure everything is nicely um, stapled and it's just smooth on the top. Once I was done with that, it was time to add the casters. These are just regular casters that you can get on Amazon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use two screws. One's gonna be longer, or two are gonna be longer than the other two, because that way I can have the longer screws go through the one by two, all the way through the leg, and then the shorter ones go through just the one, not one by two, one by four, uh, just the one by four and not go through the wood and you can see it on the other side. I pre-drilled the holes, that way the wood does not crack on me. I'm going to show you the final reveal here in just a few but now i'm going to work on this beautiful little wreath that i got at the thrift store along with these do they look like baby's breaths i don't know maybe maybe they are maybe not but i still have them um i've used them in several diys because there's so many in this little bag for just like i think it was like a dollar 99 such a great deal so i'm going to re remove all these little greenery that the wreath came with because i'm not going to need that and i'm going to just start placing a lot of this greenery all around the the or not greenery all these little flowers all around the wreath I am going to add some of jute rope to the top and that's where I would hang it from. I want this wreath to be very almost timeless where you can use any time of the year and it just has that nice farmhouse charm to it. And once again, I'll show you what that one looked like at the end of this section here. I also thrifted this beautiful basket. Now with this basket, I am not doing a thing. I am going to leave it just as is. I am just going to place several uh, little things inside of it just for added decorum. And that's it, my friends, because it is so beautiful just as is. I do not want to ruin it. Something's off the way you look and how you pause when you talk. I think you said enough. You said you love for me something brand new. All right, so we're just about done here. You can see this beautiful basket is just stunning. Once again, I still have it and I use it in a lot of my decorations. And here's the stool, what it looked like before, and then what it looks like now. Again, I still have it, use it all the time, and so does my kids to roll around the house. <laughs> And the beautiful little wreath here that is just so stunning and so timeless. I am just so in love with it.
All right, guys, so moving along here, I thrifted this mirror on Marketplace as well. It is one of those mirrors that kind of tilts as you need it, and they are meant to go like maybe in a bedroom, on a corner, and it's just absolutely beautiful, but it's not sturdy, and I just wanted to kind of do something different with it. So I'm going to remove the, the base of it, and I'm just going to use the mirror portion of it. Once I had the base completely off, I then taped the mirror because I wanted to paint it white. And um, of course, you don't have to tape it with chalk paint. It does come off pretty easily off of a mirror or a glass. But I just wanted to keep it a little simpler, so I just taped it. I am using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white and I'm going to give it two coats of it. Once again, I am using the wet distress technique. Now, at first, I wanted to do it while the paint was dry, or still a little wet, and I just did not like it. So I had to um, kind of fix it and modify it, but in the end, it turned out very, very cute. After the paint completely dry, I then decided to soften it up just a little bit using a very, very um, thin um, sandpaper. I think it was a 220. I just wanted to kind of make sure that it was uh, just smooth and the distress portion was um, seamless. I'll show you the mirror here in just a little bit, but first I wanna work on this beautiful rocking chair. So I also thrifted this from the Habitat from Humanity. Beautiful chair, very sturdy, but you could tell it's been very weathered. Now, the question was, should I paint it, should I not? My husband kept saying you should paint it, it just looks too distressed, too much. I decided not to. <laughs> I cleaned it very well, I sanded it down, and I decided to add a stencil to it.
this stencil I got on Amazon. It was a while back. I don't even remember like how much it cost or anything, but it's a French um, script stencil and I have it backwards. <laughs> Good thing I noticed right as I was going to stencil it. Nope, still backwards. All right, there we go. I'm going to use uh, Rust-Oleum chalk paint and Ling Linen White to stencil it. Now I'm gonna stencil the um, just the middle portion to the top of the chair and then to the base of the chair, so like the seat of the chair, I'm going to stencil the whole thing. Now I decided to just do one coat when I was stenciling it, and then I distressed the stencil pretty heavily to match the chair. I wanted the stencil to look like it's it's been with the chair since the very beginning, and I think I nailed it, but let me know in the comments what you thought. Once I had everything sanded and dusted, I did decide to seal everything. That way that stencil is not going anywhere and it's just the chair itself will be protected. You know, because when you're sitting down and you spill something, you just want it to make sure that it's protected. So I did seal it using a top coat and I believe the one I use is Minwax um, Polycrylic. All right, so here's what the chair looked like. And of course it didn't change much. <laughs> and then the mirror as well. And I kind of staged them together because I thought it would look so pretty. And there's that little wreath that I did earlier. How cute did this combo look? The mirror sold right away, but the chair or yeah, the rocking chair actually I kept. I still have it and I love, love, love having it. All right, guys, for this next DIY, I am going to use this very large, um, I think it's called like composite wood, maybe. Um, I found this in the piece or scrap pieces of wood at the hardware store for just a couple of dollars. If you guys are ever in the hardware store, know that there is a scrap wood area and a lot of times they sell them for almost nothing. So that's where I found this one. I'm going to give the whole thing two coats of regular latex white paint. Sunny 
I'm going to use this piece of wood. I think it's like a half by one. And I cut the four pieces to fit the edges. I want to trim this um, board. I almost lost track of time as weeks went by. I couldn't get him off of mine. And then I decided to, of course, paint it. So that way it just kind of blended in and make sure that I could have also stained them. And I think it would have looked fine. But in this case, I just wanted it to be mostly white. I thrifted these two baskets actually in Florida while I was in Florida. And um, I uh, immediately grabbed them because they have that chicken wire look and it just looks so beautiful now i did give it just a very rough one coat of rust-oleum chalk paint in the charcoal tone because they were a little bit brownish which was fine but i wanted them to have more of a darker um, almost black look and that's exactly what this chalk paint did I flipped over the board and I'm just going to add three hooks. I want this to be very secure. It is a heavy, heavy board. So I'm adding them to, um, of course, the back to the top and of course, screwing them in. So make sure that it is nicely secured. Cigarettes on the table, dirty plates on the stove. I don't know if you know where to start, but I know where you'd like to be. Now it's time to put everything together. This is going to be kind of like a command center. I'm going to place both baskets and secure them with screws. I'm afraid that I've lost you. Cause you're hiding from me. It shows that it's cost you a lot to be like the rest of us. To be like the rest of us. I've been I then also added hooks to the bottom of them so that way you can hang purses or scarves or keys, whatever um whatever we want to hang on in. <laughs> And then I also added a clip to the other uh, the, the other side of the basket. That way you can hang like maybe a notebook where you can write notes. And I'm going to stage it very simply here, but really it turned out absolutely beautiful. And I did not keep this one. I just didn't have the space for it, but someone bought it right away after I posted it on Marketplace here locally. And she just loved it. Well, Alright guys, so this next DIY is going to be mostly Dollar Tree items. I am going to use this basket. It's like a trash basket, but it has a beautiful mesh-like um, sides to it. So that's what I'm going to use, and I'm going to use it 
to put on the back of the white frame that you saw there or that you see there in the corner. I'm going to place the frame right on top and I am going to take a permanent marker and just kind of uh, mark so that way I can cut using the wire cutters and it's going to fit perfectly on the back of this frame. I am now going to secure the mesh on the frame using my electric stapler. I'm going to use some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and I am going to just knot it. At first I thought I would staple it but then I decided to just thread it through and um, knot it and I think it just turned out super cute. I added some greenery and one of those things where you can place pictures, you can actually put flowers on them. I just think it turned out so cute and again something that is just can be kept through season after season and just change the decor on it. All right, guys, I'm going to take these two, um, I believe they are placemats or rugs. I think they're rugs, but I'm almost sure they could be used as placemats as well. They're not very large. I'm going to take two of them and I am going to make a pillow. Now, one thing I noticed with these rugs is that they had a certain scent to them. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but I did not like it. Um, anyways, nonetheless, I am using hot glue to secure it together. And then I'm going to use pillow stuffing to um, stuff it and then close up the little hole that I left open um, so that I can stuff it. And look how cute and simple this pillow looks. I still have this pillow to this day and I love it. It has that very natural tone to it that is just very farmhouse-ish and I just love using it um, to give some contrast to the white linen that I have on my bed.
decorate this next DIY, I am going to take this home sign from the Dollar Tree and I am going to separate all the letters. I am going to give the letters two coats over Stolium chalk band and the linen white. In the last minute, I decided to switch things up and I'm going to use this Dollar Tree flower and I am going to remove everything that's dangling from it and then I'm going to give it two coats of the Pale Sepia chalk paint from the Bear Collection. Say take me on a treasure hunt When they sing and dance Oh, I wish it was me Every night I am going to use some more of that black latex paint that I've been using And I'm just going to paint the little middle circle When I close my eyes I see Using permanent marker, I'm going to distress the letters just very lightly um, all around the edges. And I did the same thing to the flower. I'm going to use some greenery from a uh, little flower bundle that I got from the Dollar Tree. I only need the, the leaf portion because I just want to add a little bit of green to this flower. So I'm just going to cut some of the leaves and I'm going to hot glue them to the back just to give it a little bit of a, that green tone to it. And look how cute this home sign looks. I just think it looks so, so neutral, so farmhouse-ish, and I just love it. You can It could be used season after season as well. Alright, for this next DIY, I'm going to use this piece of 1x10 and then um, smaller little pieces of 1x4. I cut four of them because I am going to make a little tray. I am going to stain it using the, I believe this was Golden Oak by Verithane. And um, of course, I'm going to use gloves because I do not want my nails, not that I have beautiful nails. <laughs> <laughs> but I just don't want to deal with the stain on my fingers. I went out in the garage so that the smell is not inside my home. Just you when you say, you say that beauty lives in me. 
I am now going to attach the legs using wood glue as well as brad nails. And if you're noticing, yes, they're not even. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, guys. And I don't know. I thought in my mind, I thought they were like perfectly even, but they're not. Now, I didn't sweat it. I didn't worry about it because they're underneath the tray. And once you flip it over, it's barely noticeable. But yeah, they're not. They're not even, but it's okay. All right, so now I'm going to use this super large stencil, but I'm only going to need the word love. So I am going to stencil it using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. And then I kind of um, use the same stencil to kind of write the word one. So now I'm just filling it in just to make sure it just looks seamless. I sealed everything using a top coat. I believe this one was by Verifane. And um, I just did, I think I did just the one coat. That way, if it's gonna be used as a tray where food's gonna be on, you wanna make sure that it's sealed. And this tray turned out so, so beautiful. Alright, for this next DIY, I'm going to use this piece of paneling. Again, this was one of those that I found at the hardware store in the wood scrap area. It was already cut to the size. I did not need to cut it. When I purchased it, it was already the size. I am sanding it down just to that, make sure that it's nicely smooth. After I dusted it, I gave it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. All right, now I'm going to use this wreath that I thrifted and I'm going to make a very simple farmhouse style wreath. I'm using greenery and flowers from the Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna place them all around. One thing I noticed was that the paneling was kind of bowing on me. So I decided to add pieces of uh, wood to the back to kind of hopefully get it to straighten out. And it didn't straighten it completely out, but it did straighten it enough where it's barely visible. And I still have this sign in my kitchen and it looks perfect. It has not bowed anymore.
I'm going to fill in all those tiny little holes using wood filler and then paint over them, well, sand them, and then paint over them to make sure that it doesn't, you can't see all those holes and nails from the front. Alright guys, so now I am going to use these stencils. These stencils are from a welcome, like a welcome sign that you would put on a porch. But I'm just going to use the some of the letters from it. And I am going to try to spell the word home. And I say try because I'm going to have to do something here <laughs> to somehow uh, come up with an age. But I am using Rustolian chalk paint in the charcoal tone. So as you can see, I use the L to create the one like bar, I guess, from the H. And then I'm going to use the same L to create another bar and then come up with some way to create the little line in between. Now it's time to add the wreath. I'm just gonna place a screw right where I need it and that way I can hang it there. And I'm gonna use some jute twine on the back. That way I can hang it from, from there. And it's, this sign is so beautiful. Like I said, I still have it and I use I have it in my kitchen and I love it. All right, guys, for this next DIY, this is a very, very simple one. I'm going to use one of these jars from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to use decals from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to cut just the little one, the little portions of the decal that I need. I'm going to place them on the jar.
I'm going to take some twine and I'm just going to wrap it around the top just a few times. That way it just adds a little bit more character to it. And that's it guys, so simple. I still have this in my studio and I keep my um, chalk paint brushes just like you see here and I love it. All right, for this next DIY, I'm going to use this Dollar General tag sign that I got on clearance at the end of last season in the fall. I'm going to remove the pumpkin from it, and I'm going to remove this little, the little portion that was holding the pumpkin um, kind of um, on, I guess. And um, I'm trying to, my best not to ruin the tag um, surface, but it's a little hard not to, but um, in the end, it turned out okay. All right, so now I am going to, at first I thought about just dry brushing the paint on the tag. And because it had those little portions there where you can see dents from when I was trying to remove it, I ended up just having to paint the whole thing white. After the paint dried, I am going to distress it just a bit using a 220 grit sandpaper. All right, guys, so here's when things get, oh my God, frustrating. So I am trying to spell um, the phrase, it's so good to be home. I'm going to use several stencils to make it happen. I'm going to use this one where it says, it's so good to be. This one turned out fine. It was seamless, no problem. The problem was when I tried to spell the word home. I tried using a stencil that I have. It's, it's more of a sign that I had once upon a time and um, I just did not love the way the font looked with the rest of the sign but you're gonna see me here <laughs> change it um, I believe it was like a couple times um, so yeah see eh, didn't like it so I painted over it with chalk paint once again and then let it dry and then I had to try something different so then I tried to um, hand dry it so just do it by hand and oh yeah i was also fixing the it's because it had um a lot of bleed through all right so now it's fixed now i'm trying to just practice here and i did practice this is a paint marker it's supposed to work nope <laughs> oh my gosh guy the level of frustration was on high at this point so now I'm trying to fix it, going back and seeing. It was just 
certain areas of the sign, it was not even coloring. It was just completely white. Once again, let it dry, paint it over it. <laughs> and then I used the same stencil that I used originally. But this time, instead of the top home, I am using the bottom home. And I'm going to use a permanent marker to trace it. And this one worked. Oh my gosh, I was happy. And look how cute it turned out. <laughs> I still have it too. It's in my entryway. And it just shows you that not everything is as easy as it seems. Um, we all struggle sometimes, but in the end, just uh, keep trying, right? <laughs> All right, guys, this next DIY is super simple and so, so cute. I'm going to take one of these trays or flower bowls. I'm not sure what it is, but it's from the Dollar Tree and they're very cute. I'm also going to take four of these wood stems from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to place them underneath and I'm just going to hot glue them to the base or to the bottom of the plate. That way it gives me a little height. I'm going to use a little sign there from the Target dollar spot and a um, some succulents from the Dollar Tree. And that's it. I mean, does it get any easier? <laughs> so cute, so beautiful. And gosh, I just love the freshness that it has. All right, so for this next DIY, I'm trying to make here a rope basket. So the original plan was to um, use this planter to create a kind of like a guide for me. So I'm going to use this burlap kind of belief runner or I don't know what it is fabric and I'm just going to use the bottom of the planter to kind of trace and I'm going to cut it that's going to be the bottom of my basket so then I then start to um, hot glue the rope to the base using the planter as a guide because I want this basket to have that same shape as the planter as the planter but um, you're going to see here that it just didn't work out. And in the end, I just had to just free hand it and it turned out fine. It was just I'm just kind of showing you the process that I took to get where I went. <laughs>
I do want to mention that I got this rope on Amazon. Um, if you have Dollar Tree ropes, you can certainly use that. It doesn't matter. Uh, but if you're going to recreate it, I just wanted to tell you where I got it. Um, so now I'm just kind of um, kind of like squishing it just to kind of give it a little bit of an oval basket look. I'm going to use some more of the rope and just hot glue handle on it. And that's it. I'm going to use some greenery put on it. And boy, is this basket so simple, but yet so cute. Once again, I still have this one in my living room and I love the way it looks. Alright guys, so moving on to the next DIY, I am going to use this eucalyptus. Is this what eucalyptus is? I believe it is. Garland. And I got on Amazon and I'm going to make a very simple wreath. I am going to um, secure it together, of course, in a circle to make sure that it has the wreath form. And then I'm going to use some of those little white flowers that I used earlier and hot glue them and attach them all around the wreath. And this is my master bedroom. This is right above the bed. And I just wanted to switch the wreath and have a fresher farmhouse look one. And this one did the job. Once again, I still have it. Man, I feel like I, I have kept all these DIYs. Oh my, but it's true. I mean, I had they're still there and I just love the way it looks. So simple. I love things that are simple. Can you tell every time I say simple? <laughs> I just love it, I think. It breathes freshness and it's just, I just love it. It makes me happy. I know that you feel it too I know that I told you 
right, so for the next DIY, I am going to use this basket that I have had for a while, actually. And although it's very pretty as is, I just don't like the red and the white. It doesn't go with my decor style. So I'm going to paint it, right? Because I paint everything. <laughs> I'm going to use Rust-Oleum Chalk Pen and the Linen White. And I'm going to give the whole thing two coats until it's fully covered. So once the paint was dry, you can, I'm just showing you there that the inside is red. So I want to change that. I'm going to use this fabric that I did get at Packetans as well. And um, it has a very neutral kind of um, print on it, which is fine. I'm going to cut um, the length of the basket. And um, once I have that cut, then I'm going to place it inside the basket. And I'm just going to hot glue it very, very closely to the top rim close enough where you do not see the red, but not over the basket. So I am going to create a little seam here. Um, that way it's just nice, nice, smooth um, transition from the outside of the basket to the inside of the basket. I know it's very difficult. I, I don't know what I was doing with my camera angle here, but basically it's, that's all I'm doing is just placing it, placing hot glue right on that rim portion and then um, guiding the the fabric on it. And it I think it turned out like really good. I mean, I, I was very impressed that it turned out so good, but um, it just looks very sim seamless and um, it just matched my decor style and I just love the way it turned out.
and there it is guys look how beautiful this basket is i also still have this basket it doesn't look like this in the sense that i don't have greenery in it i do have it with just supplies and stuff but it's just very sturdy and it's held on Alright guys, so for this next DIY, I'm going to make a farmhouse sign. I'm going to take this piece of paneling and it was already cut again. This came from that wood scrap pile at the hardware store. I'm going to give it two coats of rust chalk paint and the linen white. Right, so here I am just marking every three inches on both ends. That way I can trace lines across to give it a shiplap look. Look out, here she comes. I then decided to just sand down just a little bit the edges just to give it a bit, give it a little bit more of a farmhouse distressed look. Woman that I love. It's too bad you'll never know. Yeah, I can't tell her how I feel because she has someone who makes her I am now going to take um my permanent marker again and I'm just going to now make lines going uh, vertically and this is just to give it a um, once again it's like shiplap but just give it to, to the, the illusion that is multiple shiplaps shiplaps on this um, picture or this um, sign I'm a ghost in these walls or at least I try to be cause I hope that I'm not showing how I feel for her, but she won't feel the same for me. I've got this picture in my mind. It's just the two of us, just the two of us. But I know I have to try, try to let her go, because she won't be mine. I listen when she talks. I watch her when she walks. She's giving me these feet. And then using my permanent marker, I'm just going to place dots where you see all the lines going down. And that way it looks like screws or nails on the ship web. I've never felt before. But she will never know that I love her so well. She's with somebody else and I will have to let her go. I'm going to take this stencil that it says simply blessed that I got on Amazon and I'm going to stencil it right over everything. I'm going to use Rustonium chalk paint and the country gray.
I am now going to take this wreath that I thrifted. It's on the smaller side, so it's perfect for this project. I'm going to use some boxwood greenery that I got on Amazon, and I'm just going to place some on the wreath, not a lot. And I'm going to place the wreath on the left side of the simply blessed phrase. I wanna get away from every little thing just to try to make it through. I've been thinking about my options, every detail in my head, but it doesn't really matter, nothing matters, so I cry instead. And this sign turned out so, so beautiful. I actually used it as a gift for someone and she just loved it. I've been staring at the ceiling. I've been staying up all night. Everything I ever worked for vanished in the blink of an eye. I've been asking every question Cause I haven't got a clue Why's it gotta be me? What the hell am I supposed to do? All right, guys, so for this next DIY, I'm going to make another farmhouse sign. I'm going to use another piece of scrap paneling, and I'm just showing you there that it has a very, very rough edges. So I'm just going to sand it a little bit to get a little bit more of a smooth finish. Once I was done sanding it, I am going to paint it using Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the Linen White. I want to add the phrase bless this home but I'm going to use a different technique I'm going to use carbon paper and I'm going to trace it onto the sign I get this carbon paper and the little tools came right with it on Amazon and it actually lasts forever because it has like a ton of <laughs> a ton of pages of carbon paper and the little tools of course there's just so many of them um, but it's a really really good thing to have if you do not have a Cricut or a cutting machine um, it's a good alternative you just have to print something from your regular printer and then trace it on whatever surface you want I'm going to be trimming the sign using this pieces of wood that you see there so I'm just kind of placing it there to kind of see where the trim ends and that way I know where to place the words Once I was done tracing, now it's time to fill in the words using a permanent marker. I 
just wanna say that I feel that our love is real. Maybe we should hurry up and seal the deal. As I mentioned earlier, I will be trimming it. So I want to um, just kind of measure here where I want to make cuts and I'm going to trim the top and the bottom only. And I'm going to attach the trim using brad nails. All right, so now I'm going to add some rope to the back. That way I can um, hang it. <laughs> That's how I'll hang it. So what I'll do is I'll staple it to the top of the frame on both ends. And then, of course, the knot, it's going to give it just a little bit more of a, like, I don't know, fancy look. I don't know if it's fancy. <laughs> <laughs> I just decided to knot it. And then that's it, guys. This one is very simple, but how cute is this sign? I love, love, love it. All right, moving on to this next sign. It's another farmhouse sign using more of scrap pieces of paneling that I have. I'm going to give it once again two coats of Rustoleum chalk band in the linen white. I'm going to take this tiny little um, terracotta pot from the Dollar Tree and I'm just marking there where I want to drill a couple of holes. Using my Cricut, I designed the phrase love grows here and I'm just going to place it right on the sign. Once I had it on, on the sign, I decided to cut each word separately. That way I can actually separate them just a little bit more. Although the ter terracotta pot looks beautiful just as is, I did want it to have more of a gray look. So I am going to um, paint it with country gray from Rustoleum chalk paint, and then I'm going to dry brush some white on it, and it'll give it more of a concrete look. Gonna leave me then just do it. 
Alright, so now it's time to attach the little pot to the side. I'm going to use the little tracing tool that I used earlier for the carbon paper to thread the jute twine through. And this is what's going to hold the little pot in place. For a little bit more detail, I decided to add some jute rope to the bottom and just kind of wrap it around a few times and then tie it in the back. And that's it for this one, guys. Another beautiful, very simple, fresh looking farmhouse sign. All right, guys, for this next DIY, I'm going to make a pillow. I get these Walmart pillows for like $2.99, and they're wonderful for crafts. In this case, I am going to actually use the pillow <laughs> to make a pillow. You can tell that I've already used some of the inside uh, pillow stuffing, but I'm just going to kind of squish it and make the size of pillow that I want. I'm going to make a pillow for my rocking chair. You know, the rocking chair that I did earlier? <laughs> Well, it's still in my living room, but it was missing something, so I wanted to create a nice little pillow for it. After I had the pillow in the size that I wanted it, I folded and cut as I needed. And now I'm going to just use, using my sewing machine, just going to um, sew the one end, so that way it is nicely finished. I thrifted this sheet at the thrift store and I am going to use it to make a cover for the pillow. The pillow cover that I'm going for here is one of those that has the straps that you can tie um, and um, on the pillow. So I'm just here using the pillow as a guide to know where I need to make cuts. I love that little trim that it already has with the yellow lace so I am going to keep that to be the top portion of the pillow cover. And then once again, I'm just using the pillow to guide me to know where I need to cut. Once I have the cuts all made, I'm going to use my sewing machine once again to tie everything together or not tie, sew everything together. Now you're probably thinking that the cover is a little shorter than the pillow. Yes, that's exactly the look that I was looking for because I'm going to make ties so that I can tie it and I want some of that pillow to show through. And it'll all make sense here in a few minutes when I'm done with it.
All right, so now is the moment of truth is to verify if the pillow fits. <laughs> and when I put it in, it did fit. It actually fit, fit very perfect, which rarely happens on a first try. But as you can tell, the pillow is a little bit bigger than the cover. And that's exactly what I wanted to see. Because then when I create the little um, straps, I can just tie them and look super cute. I'm going to use, you know, that little seam portion that the sheet already has sewn as my straps. That way I don't have to tie or not tie. I don't have to sew straps because I'm not really good at that. So I'm just going to use the ones that is already on the sheet. I'm going to cut enough so that I can have them. Um, I believe I did two straps on the pillow cover and I'm going to attach them to the pillow cover with the sewing machine. So I was wrong, not two, I did three straps. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to um, use a stencil that I created on my Cricut machine to stencil, um, oh my gosh, a saying on the pillow cover. And it's gonna say farm sweet farm, which I think is super cute. And it goes along with like the farmhouse style that I love. And I'm going to use Rust-Oleum Chalk Band in the charcoal tone to stencil it. So I was really nervous as I'm removing this because I have never ever stenciled on fabric using vinyl. <laughs> so I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, again, scared that it was going to be ruined, but somehow I made it work. So I was really happy and I still have it. Yes, I still do have it on that rocking chair until this day. It looks beautiful. Surprisingly, doesn't have many stains but I'm very surprised. And I'm gonna show you here what it looks like and you're gonna see that rocking chair once again. Look how beautiful it looks.
All right, my friends, so here moving on to the next DIY, I'm going to use this thrifted box planter basket. I don't know what it was, but I thrifted it. I removed one. This is why I'm going in slow motion because I actually removed them before I hit record. So I'm just showing you that I removed one of the planks on each side. They were just a little too high. And I want to place mason jars on this basket. And it was just, uh, I wanted it to have enough space as I'm showing you there uh, for the mason jars to kind of be seen. So I love this basket the way it was. It's very sturdy, but I'm going to, of course, paint it. <laughs> but this time I'm not going to paint it by hand. I'm going to spray paint it outside using Rust-Oleum um, spray paint in the flat white. Once the paint was fully dry, I took it inside and now I'm going to distress it using my electric sander and a 220 grit sandpaper. I am now going to use one of those uh, decals from the Dollar Tree that I really, really love. And I'm just going to use a couple of the words from it, um, not all of them. And I'm going to place it on the bottom right of the basket. Using my Cricut, I cut this cute little chicken and chick, <laughs> and I am going to place it on the other side of the basket. Well, on the other side of the words of the decal <laughs> on the front of the basket. Because the basket had those planks, so I did cut the portion that it was in between each plank. That way it looks a little bit more natural to the basket. And that's it, guys. I'm going to add a, a few of these mason jars and some lamb's ear. And this basket is so farmhouse, so timeless. And you guessed it, I still have it. <laughs> <laughs> yes guys I do because it looks so beautiful and I did end up changing the greenery as you can tell but I've used it for my fall decor this year and I just really love it and I still have it All right, guys, I'm going to take this uh, letter sorter. I think that's what it is. And I am going to give it a farmhouse look. When I saw it at the thrift store, I just knew that I had to give it a farmhouse look. It was like screaming farmhouse. So I'm going to just wipe it down. It was really in good shape. It wasn't even dirty. And I'm going to, of course, give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. Cigarettes on the table, dirty plates on the stove. I don't know if you know where to start, but I know where you'd like to be. I'm afraid that I've lost you, cause you're hiding from me. Yeah, it shows that it's cost you a lot to be like the rest of us. been waiting so long for the storm to arrive I know that is in you I know that is in you dancing away with the world in your eyes oh goodbye Virginia 
Once the paint was dry, I am using a 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just roughing it up, giving it more of a farmhouse look. And this little thing is so stinking cute. No, I didn't keep this one, <laughs> but I was tempted. I just didn't have any place to put it on. I did use my Cricut to create a stencil of some animals. Um, I did one of a cow, one of a pig, and then I used again the chick and chicken that I used in the previous one, which is so stinking cute. And I'll put them on each um, little pocket front. Look how cute this mail sorter turned out. And the girl that bought it just absolutely loved it. She said it goes perfect in my kitchen and I was so happy for her. Yeah, be like the rest of us. I've been waiting so long for the storm to arrive. I know that is in you. I know that is in you. Dancing away with the world in your eyes. Oh, goodbye, Virginia. Goodbye, Virginia. All right guys, so this next DIY is like the simplest DIY I have ever made. I needed some salt and pepper shakers. So I bought these at the Dollar Tree and then I used my Cricut to cut out the S and the P and I'm just gonna place it in front and that's it. <laughs> is it even a DIY, right? I don't even know if it should be considered a DIY. But like I said, it's the simplest thing on earth. <laughs> <laughs> but we made it happen and it's there and I still use them till this day. All right, guys, so another very simple DIY was these oil and vinegar containers that I got at the Dollar Tree. Now, how cute would this be for, like, a gift? I mean, oh, my gosh. Anyways, I'm going to take them outside and spray paint them in that flat Rust-Oleum spray paints and just enough to make sure that it's nicely covered. Then I took him inside and I cut the words vinegar and oil on my Cricut and I'm just going to stencil it right on each bottle and they're going to be going vertically instead of horizontally.
And that's it for this one. <laughs> it's another very easy. It required a little bit more painting technique. I'm just kidding. Just spray painting. But um, I didn't keep this one. I actually, I believe I gave these to my mom, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, I just don't use vinegar in uh, my oil. I keep in the container that it comes in. But it's just another cute way that you can customize Dollar Tree items and even use them as gifts. All right, guys, so for my next DIY, I'm going to take this empty container. It used to be one of those like um, supplement shake kind of um, powder containers. And I'm going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Band and the Linen White. Using my Cricut, I cut out um, a stencil and I'm just going to place it on the front of the container. This is going to be used to place like large spoons and um, just for your kitchen. But um, the funny thing is, is that when I created this and I went to stage it, I realized that I do not have pretty large spoons. <laughs> Oh my gosh, guys, I panicked. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have anything pretty to put. They're all melted and stained and I was so embarrassed. But nonetheless, I found the best like two <laughs> that I had and I placed them and you'll see it here in a minute. But um, yeah, so I just placed the stencil in the front and that was it. All right, so then I decided to use a permanent marker and kind of distress the rims. And that way it just looks a little bit more farmhouse-ish and just kind of cute. I don't know. I just distressed it using the permanent marker. And we're done, guys. And look how cute and such an inexpensive way to reuse this container. And they are my two <laughs> utensils. Say, take me on a treasure hunt. I long for something new. Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance? all right guys so the next one is with this beautiful cutting board that i got at the thrift store i once again once i saw it i was like yes farmhouse it just screamed farmhouse i am going to rustoleum it once again with chalk paint and give it two coats Once it was dry, I distressed the edges using a 220 grit sandpaper.
comes later, dear, for me. And then once again, using my Cricut, I decided to create a very farmhouse um, stencil for it. And that's it. I placed it right in the front of it. And it's just another beautiful decor that can be used in the kitchen with a very much of a farmhouse style look. Alright guys, so moving on to the next DIY, I am going to take this piece of, uh, believe is, what is this? A piece of wood, sure. <laughs> um, I'm going to use more of that like one by two kind of, or one by a half kind of trim. And I'm going to make a farmhouse sign, but I want to trim it and make it look almost like a barn door kind of barn kind of window um style so i'm going to trim it using my brad nailer and then give everything two coats of rust-oleum chalk paint and the linen white I did give um, the crisscross X look to this one. So I just kind of, once I had it trimmed, I placed the piece of wood right on top using my pencil. I just kind of traced where I needed to make cuts and then using my miter saw, I made the cuts and I did the same thing for the one that was going across it.
Using this vine, I am going to DIY here a wreath. I want this wreath to be very simple. Um, once I have it in place, I'm just going to then add some greenery and some uh, white little flowers to it. And that's it. I'm going to place a screw on the sign. And that's it. I don't know if it's a sign, but it's more like a wall decor. But it just has that beautiful barn style, farmhouse style that I love. All right, guys, so for this next DIY, I'm going to take more of that paneling and I am going to make this farmhouse sign more of a tag. So I'm going to make angled cuts using my miter saw. After I make the cuts, it's time to add the whole portion of the tag and I'm going to use a spade blade or a blade bit <laughs> and I am going to just um, start drilling. Now in the middle of drilling it, at first I thought I was going to go all the way through and make like a larger hole. But once I was drilling it, it, it almost gave it this very pretty thinner hole but went with the like mark of a larger hole if that makes sense like the circle so i decided to just stop where it was right there and i just thought it just looked perfect i am going to now paint it and give it two coats of rustoleum chalk paint in the linen white Now 
once it was dry, I took my electric sander and distressed it just a bit. And that way it just has that nice farmhouse look to it. Once it was nicely done, I am now going to use, or I used my Cricut to cut the word bless our home, and I'm going to place it towards the bottom of the sign. When I cut it, I realized that I didn't place a large enough <laughs> vinyl, so the S was kind of cut, but I used my permanent marker to finish it off. Now I'm going to use some florals from the Dollar Tree and create a little swag for the top of the tag. That way it just kind of falls right over the words there very beautifully. All right, so now I'm gonna hot glue it in place and I'm just gonna add some rope and that way it'll be where, it'll be threaded through the little hole and it'll be where the sign hangs from. At the last minute, I decided to add a rope kind of um, bow. Um, I just separated one of the strands and I'm just making a very simple bow and I'm going to hot glue it to the center and that's it for this one. Another beautiful, fresh, simple looking farmhouse sign. All right, guys, for this next DIY, I'm going to use this piece of leftover paneling. This one already is white <laughs> and it has those nice little like plank look. I'm going to take more of that vine that I used earlier and I'm going to make another um, very simple wreath kind of like look, but it's not going to be like a whole wreath. I'm going to use some greenery and just start placing it to one side of the vine.
once I had enough of the greenery, I then decided to add some lamb's ear. I just felt like it was missing something. It was just too simple, too plain. I can't believe I just said that. Too simple. <laughs> I'm going to secure everything using nautical rope and I'm just going to wrap it around. All right, so now I am going to place it on the sign, I guess. Um, but I'm going to use some burlap ribbon from burlapfabric.com. I'm going to have their link down below for you guys to check out. They have everything burlap, beautiful selections of ribbon and fabric, you name it. So I'm going to put it through the top. And then that's where the wreath is going to hang from. And then I'm going to hot glue it in place. But I'm also going to place a tack that it almost make it look like that's how it's hanging. But it's more decorative. As I'm stapling it into place using staples as well, I want to tell you about my blog. It's DIYBeautyOnPurpose.com. I will be placing or posting monthly um, how to's my top 10 kind of thing it's just once a month if you want to check it out the link is down in the description box So now I'm just drilling a couple of holes and that way I can thread some jute twine through it and that's where I'll hang the sign from and that's it for this one guys. Another beautiful, very simple, fresh looking farmhouse sign. All right, for this next DIY, I'm going to take this tiny little can. It used to be a, a tomato sauce can, and I'm going to add two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk pin, but only on the top half of the can. And now I am going to add hot glue and moss to the bottom portion of it. I am going to just keep adding moss until it is fully covered um, and then removing any excess that may look too clumpy. All right, so after everything was mossed, <laughs> as any word, I'm now going to place some jute twine around it right where the moss and the paint meet. And I'm just going to make a very simple knot in the front 
and that's it. I'm going to put a succulent from the Dollar Tree on top or inside. And that's it, guys. What a beautiful way to reuse this little can. And I can almost see maybe multiple of these made with the same design in different heights, like different can sizes. And I think it would look so beautiful. All right, so for this next DIY, I'm going to use this uh, leftover, I guess, garbage <laughs> box of cereal. These are the ones that come with like two cereal bags inside that you get at those large stores. I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to give it several coats of Rust-Oleum uh, spray paint in the flat white. Once it was dry, I brought it back inside and I'm just going to stencil this stencil that I got um, at Target. But it was not a stencil. It used to be a sign, but I kept the stencil portion of it or the front portion of it. And I'm going to stencil it using um, Country Grave by Rustoleum Chalk Paint. What this box is going to be, it's going to be a place for me to place all of my like rolls of wrapping paper, rolls of vinyl. I just needed something to place them, but it needed to be something taller and very sturdy. So this box was perfect. I wanna trim the box. So I'm gonna use these paint stirring sticks and I'm going to leave them the natural tone that it has. But of course I wanna sand down <laughs> the orangey um, letters and numbers on it. Um, that way I can have it natural looking. And then once I have them ready, I'm just going to measure the top um, and the bottom rims and just so that way I can make cuts as necessary. Before I trimmed it, I did decide to make a couple holes on each side of them. That way I can add rope so I can add handles to the box. So now it's time to trim. I decided to staple it. Now I did make the error that I was um, stapling it, but the staples were too large. Unfortunately, it was just the smallest size I had, but I didn't realize that until I was stapling it. But I then, when I picked up the box, I realized that it went through. So I had to take it apart and then just opt it for adding one staple in each corner. And it turned out just fine that way. Um, it's going to be a box that is just going to be sitting somewhere with things in it. So I didn't need for it to be the trim for it to be super secure.
And that's it for this one, guys. This is another one that I still have and it's still holding my rolls of wrapping paper. All right, for this next DIY, I'm going to use another can. Um, this one is a kind of like a medium-sized can. I'm going to remove the bottom uh, base of it using my can opener. And um, that way, I'm going to have a completely hollow on both or open on both sides can. Um, once I have that, I am going to then start to um, flatten this can. So I want to create a pocket with this can. So I'm going to start flattening out um, the bottom portion of it completely flat. And then I'm going to fold it like an envelope. And the top portion of it, or the opposite side, I'm going to fold it very little just to make it a little bit oval. I did have to take it outside and hammer it because once it started getting closer to that flat, it got really, really strong and I couldn't do it with my fingers. So I did take it outside and hammered it down so it's nicely flat and folded. Look out, here she comes Woman that I love It's too bad she'll never know I also hammered one of the sides. So you see how it has like a little lip? I did hammer the back side of it flat. That way I can use my hole puncher and be able to put it right through because I want to make two little holes on the back. That way I can add a chain to it and that's where we can hang it from. This hole puncher is wonderful. If you guys need one, it goes through, oh gosh, some thinner woods, paper, fabric, metal, I mean, it's just really good. I do have it in my Amazon store, which is linked down in the description box. Actually, a lot of the supplies that I use, paint, tools are in that Amazon store. Check it out if you'd like. All right, so after I have those holes, I am going to paint it using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white, and I gave it two coats. Yeah, I can tell her how I feel Because she has someone who makes her happy I'm a ghost in these walls Or at least I try to be Cause I hope that I'm not showing How I feel for her But she won't feel the same for me I've got this picture in my mind once it was dry, I am going to freehand the word grow and then distress it using a permanent the marker. Us, just the two of us. But I know I have to try. Try to let her go. Because she won't be mine. I listen when she talks. I watch her when she walks. She's giving me these feelings that never felt before but she will never know that i love her so well she's with somebody else and i will have to let her go she will never know na -na. never know na -na. she will never know na -na. once i was done with that it's time to add the chain this is just one of those dollar tree chains that you can put a planter on it brings three little chains I'm going to take one of the little hooks from one of the other chains and attach it to the other side. That way I have two hooks where I can then place the pocket from. Once I added the chain, it was time to add some succulents and that's it. This one is one of those really like 
ones that you would just put in a little corner where you just need a little bit of a flowery touch and it's just so so beautiful and again using a can that otherwise would have been thrown away I guess for this next DIY, I'm going to use this Dollar Tree frame. I am going to also be using painter stirring sticks that happen to be the exact size as the frame. What? <laughs> Again, stuff like this never happens, but I was like, what in the world? Anyways, they fit perfectly. I'm going to hot glue them in place, leaving about a half inch space in between them. Get away from every little thing just to try to make it through. All right, so now I'm going to, of course, <laughs> paint the um, everything, but specifically the frame is already white. I had used it for another DIY previously. So I'm just going to paint the um, sticks uh, white, but it's not going to be perfectly. I want it to be a little bit rough so it has a distressed look. I'm now going to add this greenery. This greenery I got at at home, the store, and um, it was on clearance, and I just happened to grab a couple bundles of it. It's just very fresh looking greenery. I'm going to cut the excess stem, and I'm just going to attach it on the bottom. What is this? The left bottom portion, I think, <laughs> of the frame with some jute twine. I am now going to add a clothespin to the other side. That way we can hang a picture from it. I am now going to make a very simple bowl using the jute rope and that way I can hot glue it to the front of the greenery and that's it guys we'll call it a day with this one and it is just so beautiful and again so simple.
All right, guys, for this next DIY, I'm going to be using foam board from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to cut a piece of it. Like, I wasn't even interested in measuring or anything because it's going to be one of those things that is just custom. So if I were to guess, I think it's like a 12 by 18 kind of thing. Um, just making it as straight as possible. Even though the foam board is already white, I do want to paint, just give it one coat of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. That way it has a nice matte and um, bright white look that I'm looking for. I would be up waiting for you if you had to leave. I would wait a lifetime if you were at sea. I'm going to use tongue suppressors um, that you can get at the Dollar Tree and this little cutting tool that I also have on my Amazon store. And I'm going to use these to frame the entire foam board. So now I'm going to use that leftover decal that I used earlier for another project and I'm going to use the love um, beyond words. <laughs> Sorry, I went blank there um, and I'm going to use it and I'm place it on the bottom right side of the frame. And now I'm going to use some of those Dollar Tree succulents that are just so beautiful and bright. And I'm going to hot glue them to the upper left corner of the um, sign, I guess. Yeah. And we are done with this one. And this one is so bright and so beautiful. I love, love, loved it.
All right, so do you remember that let's get cozy sign? <laughs> well, this this is already like a year later. So I am going to reuse it because I was done with it. And I'm just going to cover the, the phrase on it. But I'm going to reuse it to make a new sign. Using my Cricut, I cut the phrase farm, sweet farm once again, and I added the cute little chicken and chick, and I'm going to just place it right on the board, and this is going to be used in my kitchen, and I still have it. Yay! I love this little sign. It's just so farmhouse-ish, and it's just beautiful. It's a perfect square sign, and I just have it right above my sink. I love it. Something's off the way you look and how you pause when you talk. I think you said enough. You said you love for me something brand new. You said this is something you would never do. Here we are in your car. Let me see who you are, who you really are. are yeah, don't need you here to say you're sorry. All right, guys, moving on to the next DIY, I'm going to take more of that same paneling and I'm going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk pan and the linen white. I am now going to take a bowl from the Dollar Tree just so that I can trace the circle. It's the perfect circle to fit this um, size board. And I'm going to trace it three times. But every time I'm going to move the bowl just slightly to one side or the other. That way I have the same circle size but just three different times. And you'll see what I'm talking about here. than me that can make you feel the way you feel when I hold you I think I said enough you said you love for me something brand new you said this is something you would never do here we are in your car let me so there's what it looks like now I'm going to use more of the Dollar Tree decals and I am going to this is leftover from another project the one where I did the little jar with my paintbrushes. So I'm going to take the leftover decal and I'm going to use it and place it inside the circle. Now using some boxwood greenery from Amazon, I am going to create a little swag to attach to that side of the circle and I'm going to attach it in the middle using um, nautical rope <laughs> and I believe this one is from Amazon. Red, I'm on a 
sunny day in late July and everything turned upside down. I almost lost track of time as weeks went by. I couldn't get him off my mind. I told him I want that great love, like standing in the middle of a bone. And once I had it done, I just attached it with a whole ton of glue. And then I added two holes to the top of the picture or the frame or the sign. <laughs> that way I can hang it using some rope. And that's it for this one. Now this one I no longer have, but I did have it for like a long, long time in my kitchen as well. I just changed it recently and sold it, sold it on Marketplace here locally, but it's just beautiful and I loved it. All right, guys, so this one is one of those that I'm going to use recyclable items again. So I'm going to use this water bottle, which I instantly thought how beautiful is this water bottle. It was tall and slender. It just had a nice look. I cut up the or cut out the top portion and I am using my hot glue gun to just melt the edges of the cut. So that way it is not going to scrape or cut anyone. I took it outside and gave it a couple of coats of this spray paint. This is like that hammered silver spray paint from Rust-Oleum. And then um, once I had it where I wanted it, I took it back inside and I'm going to give it a very um, kind of like industrial farmhouse look. And I'm going to age it using some antiquing wax by Waverly and my stenciling brush. And I'm going to focus on the top edge, the bottom edge and everywhere in between as well. Once I was done with that, I am now going to take some jute rope and I'm going to tie a simple <laughs> knot to it, add some flowers to it. And that's it, guys. I mean, wow, beautiful is this little just container. And even if this is not the style that you like, it's not particularly my style. I just wanted to try something different. I just think it looks beautiful and you could it could even be painted white with the same rusting technique. And I think it looks beautiful.
cigarettes on the table, dirty plates on the stove. All right, for this next DIY, I'm going to use this box that I got a shipment from, and I am going to trim the whole thing, every side of it, using the tongue suppressants. Again, I am cutting using that cutting tool, and I'm going to hot glue these in place all around, and I'm also going to crisscross every side as well. I don't know if you know where to start, but I know where you'd like to be. I'm afraid that I've lost you. Virginia. Is done with all the trim. I am now going to give everything two coats of Rustoleum chalk paint in the linen white. And you wink in your toes. You got eyeball and down to an art and is working too well in the I need someone to talk to when you're hiding from me. So you're all and just walk through the rain. Be like the rest of us Yeah, be like the rest of us I've been waiting so long for the storm to arrive I know that it's in you I know that it's in you Dancing away with the world in your eyes Oh, goodbye, Virginia Goodbye, Virginia Now I am going to distress the box using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the charcoal tone and I'm going to use my stenciling brush. I'm just going to rough it up a little bit on the edges, on the corners. Now I did go overboard a little bit so I did end up having to uh, add a little bit more white paint here and there but um, not much. I still wanted it to have that distressed look. All right, so now I'm going to take these upholstery tags and I'm going to cut out the pointy part of it and I'm going to place or hot glue them in each corner just to add a little bit more of an like a industrial farmhouse look to it. And we're just about done with this one, guys. I'm going to add some flowers to it. And look how beautiful this box looks. Now, I don't have this one, but I literally just um, switched it out and got rid of it like two days ago. I loved it. It was still in great shape. I just needed something bigger and I just didn't know what to do with it. But other than that, I mean, it was very sturdy.
All right, so for this next DIY, I'm going to take another one of those containers that I have for supplemental shakes, and I'm going to mark three inches down and make a straight line, and then I'm just going to cut it all the way around. All right, so now I am going to cut out the bottom portion of it as well. And once I, I cut out the, the bottom portion, I am going to then um, cut the remaining kind of like middle part, as you see there, and cut all the way down. That way now I have a nice flat surface. What I want to do with this, I'm going to take that top portion that I cut out earlier, and I am going to use it to trace uh, just like maybe a third of it. I'm going to cut it using another one of my cutting tools. I believe I do have it in my Amazon store as well. And then I'm going to hot glue this part to the front of the circle of remaining circle. Then I'm going to hot glue the bottom portion that we removed earlier right onto the back of it. I'm going to really, really hot glue it. I'm not concerned with excess glue and if you're going to see it because I'm going to paint it and I'm going to, again, use that rusting technique with antiquing wax. So I don't mind it. It almost looked like it was welded and I really like that look. Once I had it nicely secure, I am going to paint everything with Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. treasure hunt I long for something new Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance and as I mentioned earlier, I am going to give it a look like it's been rusting. So once again, I'm going to use the antiquing wax and my stenciling brush and kind of just go over all the edges. Later it 
Now I'm going to drill two holes, one in each side, and this is so that I can thread some jute twine and that'll be where we can hang the pocket from. This is just another one of those little pockets that you can place on the wall, and I am going to add some succulents to it, and that's it. This is another very beautiful, very simple kind of um, fresh looking farmhouse decor, and again, using recyclable items. All right, guys, so moving on to this next DIY, I am going to take these three little bottles. They used to be um, like yogurt drinks that you can get for your kids. And I just thought the, the shape of them was really cool. I'm going to cut out the top portion of just one of them. And then I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom of another one. The wonderful thing about this was that when I um, hot glued them, it... Um, kind of had it kind of melted a little bit of the plastic so it had a very strong bond now i am going to place um oh my gosh sand white sand on the bottom this is just from white sand from the dollar tree on the bottom uh, bottle one that way it's going to stay nicely secure and it's not going to oh, tilt yeah. over So now I am going to, like I said, attach one of them to the bottom of the other one using hot glue. And then I'm going to take little cups, these plastic little cups that you can get at any supermarket. And I am going to hot glue one on each one. I'm going to take him outside and I'm going to spray paint him again using that Rust-Oleum hammered spray paint and I'm going to cover them nicely. Instead of rusting them, and this time I'm going to dry brush uh, some chalk paint on it. This is just to give it a little bit of a, I don't know, maybe like a ceramic effect or something like that. Um, just an, I'm going to keep the side to side kind of um, brushing. That way it keeps that same rounded shape that it has.
And that's it for this one, guys. Another easy one. And what a way to use things that you already have in your home. Look how cute they look. All right, guys so moving on this is another one of those larger containers this one was for some powdered milk that we used to feed my son when he was younger i am going to now give it two coats of rustoleum chalk band and the linen white All right, now I'm gonna take some fabric that Burlap Fabric sent me, and I'm gonna cut out a, a piece that I can use um, on the front of the can. Now I had cut this, and then I realized that I needed to make some changes because the stencil was not fitting. Anyways, I made it work in the end, but um, I did stencil this farmer's market stencil that I got, I believe it was on Amazon, um, and, um, using Rustoleum chalk band in the charcoal tone. Using a permanent marker, I am now going to just distress the can, the rims all around it, and that way it just has more of a farmhouse look. And now that I have everything distressed, I am going to attach the fabric right on the top or the front, and I'm gonna hot glue it in place. All right, now I am going to drill a couple of holes on each side of the can.
I made them very big so that I can thread one of those nautical ropes from the Dollar Tree, knot them inside, and then I can create a rope handle on this can. And that's it for this one. Another beautiful, very different and unique, and again, a beautiful way to use a recycled can. All right, so next DIY, I'm gonna be using another recycled container. This used to be, I think it was like a cashew container. <laughs> and I'm going to just cover it in this spackle. This spackle you can get at the Dollar Tree. And there's no right or wrong way. You literally just get messy and add it all over the container. And then once I was kind of done, I was kind of just using the palm of my hand to kind of press it down. And then once it was dry, I let it dry for a couple of hours or more. I'm going to now paint it using Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint and the Linen White. And you're going to start seeing all that beautiful texture that it's going to have. I'm now going to use this buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I am going to tie it around the top. I made a simple bow and cut the excess ribbon and then it was time to just place a little tag in the front using hot glue. These little tags are from the Dollar Tree and you can get them. I think it was in their like garden section but I thought it would be cute to just remove the stick from it and then use the tag to place it right in the front. Or 
right guys so this is it for this one it turned out so stinking cute so beautiful and guess what it's the last one from today's video if you've made it all the way to here thank you so much for watching if you're visiting for the first time i hope it gives you tons of inspiration and i hope you consider subscribing and joining our youtube family if you're returning thank you so much for coming back i hope again it also gives you inspiration and just to get some decorations for farmhouse and do it yourself guys i hope you have a blessed day take care i'm gonna have a playlist here with tons more inspiration check it out if you want to watch more i'll see you later bye